Hello and welcome back. I hope you're all doing well and I'm here with a couple of stories for you. So let's start off with the first one. I think this is major. Apparently there has been a story going around which was just a storm brewing, basically calling the Duke of Sussex a liar. I mean, let's just say that. So they said uh, in this story, and I won't go into the details, that the portion in Prince Harry's book where the Duke recalled a flight in which his former flight instructor, Sergeant Major Michael Bully, deliberately stalled their slings BT-67 Firefly propeller plane. So there was that whole story that was laid out in the book for those of you who've read it. And the Mirror and a couple of other outlets, they covered this incident in the book and you know they labeled it an exclusive whereby uh, Major Michael Bully had said that the claims were quote complete fantasy and that has basically been the headline and the lead of a lot of articles and I think um, if you see it right here and I'm showing you how it's been laid out um, on several websites and in news uh, platforms that the sergeant is blasting uh, Prince Harry and is saying that it's all, as I said, their complete fantasy. So I think that the aim of this is they know that a lot of people do not click on articles. They don't read through it. So now we have an update on this story. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the sergeant has come out and he is just so taken aback by how his words have been twisted. So I will read what he uh, posted on Facebook and I was really sure to follow up and make sure that this was in fact him rebutting the story and you know, not people saying that it's you know people trying to cover for Prince Harry in quotes. I went on the link, clicked through to his Facebook page and this is what he wrote. He says this. And it, it is just so sad. He says this, quote, I have written to the press in the comments. I am raging. Please pardon the typo. It should read complex PTSD, not complete. They have now blocked my comments too. So he says that in response to this comment that he wrote, rebutting this story and saying that they had taken his words and completely misrepresented them. So he says this, quote, I am Michael Bully, Harry's former sergeant major flying instructor quoted in this article out of the blue i was contacted by the press to be made aware they were writing articles and as i was named in harry's book spare i was offered an opportunity to comment on it i was completely unaware of this as i had not seen it i was then provided with an inaccurate version of the book translated he writes that in parentheses and in response I expressed my concerns about any possible detrimental narrative from the outset. I later saw the English version and highlighted the differences to the press. I was assured then if I offered any comment, they would be reported on accurately. He went on to say, quote, stupidly and against my better judgment, I proceeded on trust. I made it absolutely clear that Harry was an exceptional student and I had nothing but the utmost respect for him. I highlighted some inaccuracies in the book, in particular reference to the flying sorties, but felt they were probably not Harry's words and highly likely to be dramatized due to the fact that the book was ghostwritten. I did not know who the ghostwriter was and certainly did not blame him. Not once did I say anything derogatory about Prince Harry and certainly never said it was quote complete fantasy. As the article headlines would have you believe, I made it clear to the reporters that I would not approve of anything derogatory and yet here we are. I also made it clear that I myself am suffering with complex PTSD and I'm under treatment for it and any misquotes or twists could potentially impact my health and well-being. I feel let down and betrayed by them, he says. He also went on to say, I also feel foolish for having listened to their assurances of trust and honesty. I should have known better. I certainly did not ask for or receive payment as some above comments suggest and I'm very despondent about how this article has been portrayed." End quote. So you can see it there, he's quite saddened by how his words have been taken out of context to basically put a narrative forth that 
you know, Prince Harry, he is lying about, you know, certain things. He does say yes, perhaps dramatic effect on how that specific story was laid out in the book. But all in all, he does say that Prince Harry was an exceptional student, as he says. And of course, they do have that training where we have to go through a couple of drills in all types of situations that they might face. And that includes stalling an engine. So, so he is put aside forth. He is just so saddened by how they have done this. And it makes you wonder, they went out of their way to contact him and they assured him that they would cover the story in honesty. And if you can go through how they put the story forth, you know, saying that it's a complete fantasy and that's the basic headline. They know a lot of people will share this um, story and many people will say, oh, yet another thing debunked in this book. I even saw some comment of someone saying that, you know, how could this book be in the nonfiction category? It is a narrative, I think, by now. It's quite interesting how a lot has been put into this particular book to debunk the Duke of Sussex. I do not think I have seen so many outlets devoted to taking apart a book i mean right now there is for example michelle obama's book out i do not think we've had any outlets trying to contact people who may be in her book trying to you know basically say did she lie or you know trying to put a spin on it but i guess as michael has said they did not have respect for what he had agreed with them saying that he would not allow anything derogatory about the Duke of Sussex to be attributed to him and he says it yet here we are he feels let down and betrayed by them as he said so I think that's a lesson for a lot of people that's why I think when we notice Prince Harry in a lot of interviews he really does self-edit because he knows he knows he cannot let his guard down especially now you can definitely see that you know there is something going on so much attempts to debunk his book to try and pick it apart to try and get inaccuracies in quotes trying to get lies in quotes and there is this whole narrative that I'm seeing being put forth that he is lying about things and talking about how mentally stable or unstable that he is I just find this so sad and by the way I want to add this as well there was a story that came out a while ago where um, they had said that Nelson Mandela's granddaughter had claimed that Harry and Meghan were quote using uh, her grandfather's legacy in their Netflix show and she later on came out and she was defending the Duke and Duchess of Sussex use of Mandela's quotes in their docuseries so it's interesting how there is that interplay that we are seeing this huge attempt to dis, you know just to disparage this couple somehow and we remember the whole narrative that people were tired of them and yet we have all of these new figures coming out that the duke of sussex's book has broken all kinds of records i'm talking guinness world records right here so it's a contradiction in and of itself how can people be tired of you yet are reading about you and are reading all these articles and the amount of videos that i have seen online saying i watched um, this show of, of the Sussexes or read this book by Prince Harry so that you don't have to read it so that you don't have to watch and the views on those videos are just monumental so it, it, it's interesting yeah uh, how that is playing out it is so 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 interesting to me and <laughs> this is also another segue into this story I've been seeing a lot of um, some British outlets asking where is Megan it's like, what is going on? They say that she is an attention seeker and she just loves when the camera is on her. You know, some people call her narcissistic and, you know, we know all about that. And now they are so perturbed that they've not heard from her ever since the, the, the book came out and they are like, where is she? So what is it? Which is it? Do they not want to see her are they not saying that they themselves are tired of her so why ask you know this should be the time that they are just <sighs> breathing out you know exhaling you know they've not seen her for a while they should be popping their bubbly but you know we have this contradiction of where is she and I, I, I'm just surprised and I've seen a lot of you as well saying how is it possible why are you asking for her even people who like her they don't they've not even asked that question she's probably off taking care of her kids you know doing her thing 
And I, I just think it's so interesting. I saw this story. Someone was asking. Um, it's like she's just left Prince Harry to sort all of this on his own. And, you know, it is his book. Why does she need to be there? And, and yet again, in that vein of where Meghan is, as some woman, uh, she was talking, I think it was on GBN. And she was saying something about the fact that she was surprised that the marriage between Harry and Meghan has lasted so long. So yeah, that's that again. So strange and weird. So it is interesting in all this. I think that um, it's quite evident to all that there is a lot of media manipulation and a huge attempt to smear Prince Harry right now. And that constant thread of trying to look to blame Meghan and a narrative that isn't quite sticking to itself. She can't be this huge narcissist that you all claim and you don't want to see her yet you are asking for her so yeah it also now does make me go into this story as well great segue as we are discussing seeing the duke and duchess of sussex soon i did uh give a poll because we know that the coronation is around the corner and uh there has been a lot of people speculating on whether the Duke and Duchess of Sussex would go. It is a huge event. It is historical. It is Prince Harry's dad. Undoubtedly one of the biggest days of his dad's life being crowned king. I did put out the poll. I wanted to get a feel of what everyone was thinking about. Because um, I know a lot of you <laughs> a lot of you do not want to see Harry and Meghan uh, back there in the UK. You, you don't feel it's safe for them. Of course, we see how the press are just sometimes so committed to this narrative about this couple and, you know, turning the UK against them. So this is your vote on this. I wrote here, the coronation is on the horizon. I feel that Harry and Meghan will be invited. Will you be watching? Do you feel that the Sussexes should be a part of this event? And I said, vote on these options below. So this is the result. 13% of you said, yes, Harry and Meghan love the UK and should go. And 75% of you voted for their safety concerns that they should not go and 12% said not sure so I, I felt it was that that's why I did a repost so thank you for those of you who uh, participated in that poll it is on my community tab it's still running by the way if you want to go and vote there so a couple of you said that they should not go saying that their safety is paramount of course reiterating the fact that the press have been so negative against them but I do believe if they were to go, they would have police protection. I think for such a state event, it would just be standard. So uh, this is a comment from one of my channel supporters here. Let's read from Cookies and Cream. She said this quote, I truly hope the Sussexes don't go. They really need to cut ties, all ties with that family. However, I'll support the Sussexes in whatever decision they make. Thank you, Cookies, for sharing that with us. All in all, I do love the fact that you've said you will support the Sussexes in the decision that they make. And I think that should be above all. And here is another comment from another channel supporter on this Lydia Washington one of the channel moderators here she said this I would pray that at some point they reconcile as it seems to be Prince Harry's wish however now is not the time I would be concerned for their safety at this time end quote so thank you Lydia for sharing that with us indeed that is a great point Harry and Meghan do still want reconciliation and i do think that harry reiterated that in his interview uh with michael strahan in his 60 minutes interview as well he does want there to be some acknowledgement of what went wrong of the briefings and yeah i think at the end of the day we are all praying for that reconciliation thank you lydia for sharing that with us so yes, I, a lot of you are concerned about their mental health. Betty Wright also writes and says this, quote, I think they should put their family first. It's going to take place whether Harry and Meghan attend or not. Thank you, Betty, for sure. You have such a big picture kind of view on things. Things will go ahead whether you know they choose to go or not. Um, so let's just see what happens. Thank you, Betty, once again for sharing that with us. Thank you all who commented. A lot of you have said that, you know, they are family, they should reconcile. Um, some of you, of course, have pointed out the fact that the press have been so against them. 
Some of you have talked about them pulling focus from the rest of the other senior working members of the royal family. And of course, some of you have indeed pointed out that even though they are given security for you know the coronation, that you just feel that they should not go. You fear that they might be disrespected. Thank you so much for sharing all your comments. In the end, I think uh, let's just all support them in what they choose to do. As Harry has pointed out, UK is his home. I know he has adopted the US, but UK is his home. And I like to remind people they are not in exile. It's not like, you know, they've been banished. You know, there is a whole culture there that Harry would love to expose his kids to. Part of his life and a part of, you know, his children's lives in a way as well so they aren't cut off you know as i'm trying to say and i do think that prince harry is proud of the fact that he is british and he would love to have his kids also have a taste of an appreciation of that culture back home his major problem we should always remember and he's pointed it out time and time again is with the tabloid media with the aspects of the coverage that had come against megan the lies the media manipulation, the briefing, as he pointed out, but he does not have a, say, a personal problem with the UK. So I do in the years moving forward, as much as he, I know he loves USA, he, he, he says it's great. I do believe we will see a lot more of Prince Harry bringing his kids over to the UK so that they can also get that immersion into that culture there. There is a whole culture there he's proud of being british we should always keep that in mind and oh, by the way um one more thing remember what he said when he was asked um whether he believes in the monarchy in his interview he said yes that dichotomy i think that's something a lot of us who love and want their safety we need to keep that in mind there is a lot there to unpack and i think we go into that in this video we'll be here for quite some time duty is drilled into him duty to the monarch is drilled into him whether that was under the queen elizabeth you no know, before as he served the queen and now as it's his dad the king there's just some things you will not be able to uproot out of him you know at the drop of a hat so i would think if they do get invited that he will go and we just have to support them and have to pray for them to be safe and find a way for them to navigate the spaces that they will be in in a wise way that everything can just go as smoothly as possible but i do know that prince harry loves the uk and he wants his kids to have that culture in them as well and he is going to fight tooth and nail as he's fighting for that police protection to ensure that he can be free in his home country when he's there and, and free to have his kids and Meghan as well, of course, uh, you know, just immerse themselves into his own culture as well. So I just want us to kind of grasp that part as well. He's never going to cut them off completely, never going to cut off his country. He's going to want to go back and he wants reconciliation with his family. I think that's above all. So thank you once again, all who voted and all who commented. I do appreciate it. And by the way, before we finish this video, I did see a very interesting story, some speculation right now that um, Prince Harry has been receiving multi-million pound and dollar deals to host a coverage of king charles's coronation should he you know not attend for whatever reason uh, there is a report that major u.s tv networks are reportedly keen for the duke of sussex to basically appear there on their stations giving commentary about the big day and it's guaranteed uh, you know that's going to be ratings gold for whoever could secure that but as I said before, I don't think that any network should hold their breath. That is his dad's big day. For King Charles, who is 74, talk about waiting in the wings for this big day in his life. <laughs> I think at the end of the day that it will be paramount for Charles to have Prince Harry there. Some of you may say it's for PR. Some of you may say that it's just because he's his dad and wants his son to be there on his big day it's, you know <laughs> or some of you may just say it's to ensure that <laughs> nothing happens in california to pull focus from him as well no it's archie's birthday <laughs> i know some people there would not like to see a split page of archie celebrating his birthday 
opposite King Charles's coronation on the front pages of newspapers. I don't think they want to see that. So for whatever reason, I really want to know your thoughts because this is a huge day. So let's see what happens. Multi-billion dollar offers could be on the table for Prince Harry to join a broadcast team. So that is a very interesting speculation. I personally do not think Prince Harry will do that. But all in all, I'm so happy to share all these stories with you. Now let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Before we log off, as always, a special thank you to those who support this channel financially. I want to give a couple of shout outs to you right now. Thank you to you, to Valerie Sedeno. Thank you for your continued support for this channel. I do appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to Patricia Crenshaw. Patricia, your support has been truly meaningful to me. I want to say thank you. NJCD, thank you, thank you, thank you from the depth of my soul. I'm so grateful to God for you every day. Thank you for your giving and a special heartfelt thank you to TCC Sun. God bless you for your giving and your generosity. I appreciate you. Once again, leave all your thoughts on these stories in the comment section and also share this video. Let's help get Sergeant Michael Bully's rebuttal to the misquotes and misrepresentation of his words out as well. And leave your comments in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. I love you all. Have a great day wherever you are. I love you and I will catch you in the next one. Have a blessed one.